So let's look at more slightly more complex calculations. The process is the same, and it's easy once to get a whole or a hang of it, but with a little practice, sometimes it's necessary before we get there. Let's look. It says when none of the units involved is a base unit, two or more steps is necessary. Notice these are not base units because this is microgram, this is decigram, the base unit is gram. This is not a gram, this is a microgram, this is not a gram, this is a decigram. So how do you do something like this? All right, there's the full answer. We're going to go through this in a sec, but notice what we do is we convert from what we start to the base unit, and then from the base unit to what we're trying to find. So in this case, we went from microgram to gram, and from gram to decigram. Now that I know because two steps necessary because neither one is the base unit. So how would I actually go through that like from scratch? Step one, write the given. Step two, set up your conversion factor. So microgram, I put microgram here so it can cancel. Remember I said you convert from what you're starting with to the base unit, so from microgram to gram. So we put microgram on bottom so that it can cancel. We put gram on top because, well, it's the only space left over. You then add your next conversion because you know gram is not your final answer, therefore you need it to cancel. If you put it up here, it will not cancel, but if you put it down here, yes, it will. So we put gram down here so it can cancel with gram up here. Then. We say, okay, gram to decigram. Now, why can we do that? Because your chart tells you how many micrograms are in a gram. Your chart tells you how many decigrams are in a gram. You can get that directly off the chart. However, there's nothing in your chart that tells you how many decigrams are in a microgram. It does not have that information. Okay, but you can get this information from gram to microgram or microgram to gram. And you can also get this information going between the base unit of gram and decigram. So that's why we do it this way. So, this cancels, this cancels, leaving this. So I'll put that, uh, I think that might be out of view, but one gets the idea. Um, it is going to give us the answer we want. Is it out of view? No. Okay, it's in view, all right. So, remember that's step two, set up units. Notice, no numbers. Don't even think about putting numbers in here until your units are right. Now that we've done that, now you can put in numbers. Micro means a million. Well, one one millionth, actually. It's a tiny fraction. So that means it involves a number million. And you take that number and you put it next to the smaller unit. Which one is smaller, a gram or one one millionth of a gram? Answer now. Hopefully you said one one millionth of a gram, so I'm going to put the big number next to the small unit. And I'll put an automatic one next to the other number. And then the same thing here, decigram. Deci means one-tenth, so you're working with the number 10. And then what you do is you put that number next to the smaller unit, which is here. And an automatic one next to the other unit. So look at this now, ladies and gentlemen. Is this telling you to multiply or divide by this number? Answer now. OK, hopefully it said divide. What about this one? Multiply or divide? Answer now. Okay, hopefully you said multiply. So this divided by this times this gives you the answer. All right, that's how you go through it now. Instead of me going through, I've already got the whole thing animated, so I'll just put it up for you in a more compact form because I was running out of space. So this is the whole thing that we just did, just typed. And this divided by this times this equals this. And there's our answer making sure to box our answer, of course. Now notice, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight sig figs. This is two metric units, so it's infinite. Don't worry about it, doesn't affect our rounding. Infinite sig figs, because it's two metric units, so don't worry about it, doesn't affect our rounding. So if we have eight sig figs here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight sig figs there, so we're good. Sig figs works. So if we look at the rest of these, we're gonna see a similar progression. So here we went from microgram to gram, gram to decigram. 
So you can think of it as microgram to gram, which is what we did here, and then from gram to decigram. Our strategy here is indeed going to be, look similar. Tell me now, what is the base unit of this conversion? Hopefully you said meters. So here's how we're gonna go about this. You're gonna start with centimeters, and you're gonna be looking at a similar kind of strategy. Complete this now, what strategy would you use to go from centimeters to kilometers? And hopefully you said centimeters to the base unit of meter, and then from meter to kilometers or kilometers. Right, that, check it out, is exactly the same sort of thing that's done. So if we write our given, 40,000 centimeters, and then we put centimeters on bottom so it can cancel. We're going to grams next, so grams here, because we're gonna go to grams. And then another conversion factor. And then we want grams down here so it can cancel because it's not supposed to be in the, oops, I just realized. I'm totally not paying attention. I was looking at that and got confused, meters, centimeters to meters. And then meters goes down here so that I can cancel. And then we need kilometers as our final answer, so kilometers. So we're going through that same process that we said earlier, centimeters to meters to kilometers. I should erase that to avoid confusing myself. Um, and then once again, we fill in the numbers. All right, so to speed things along, you should be to say right now, centi. What number is involved? What, does, what is the meaning of centi? Well, you should, your chart tells you it's one one hundredth. So that means you're putting the number hundred somewhere. Does the number 100 go on top or on bottom? Decide now. Okay, hopefully you correctly put that it goes on bottom because the big number goes next to the small unit. And then here, kilo means 1,000. Where does the 1,000 go, top or bottom? Decide now. Hopefully you chose the small unit of meter. So this is how it goes. So essentially what it's saying is we're going to take this number and then divide it by 100 and then divide it by 1,000. All right, you do that on your calculator and this is what you wind up with. Now, if you want to use scientific notation, you could, it's fine. You won't absolutely require it, but you, you could for this one. We never take points off for it, but there are times we'll take points off if you don't use scientific notation. So this divided by that, divided by that, gives that, there's our answer. And by the way, just a quick confirmation, remember, two metric units, two metric units. So infinite sig figs for both of these. So we just notice one sig fig here and one sig fig here. So that's why that's good and acceptable. All right, now for this last one, I'm gonna try this out. See if you can apply the same process here. And the thing I'm gonna ask before you do that though, is identify what is the base unit here? Okay, hopefully you said meters, which is why you'll notice right here. So have a look at that. All right, once again, deci is a tenth, so we put 10 next to the small unit. Kilo is a thousand, so we put a thousand next to the small unit. And we go from decimeter to meter, as in like cancel decimeters and convert to meters. Cancel meters so that we can convert to kilometers and have kilometers in our final answer. And, ah, oh, there we go. That number for sure is required to be in scientific notation, so we box our final answer to make sure we don't get confused between what's our final answer and what isn't. Notice, three significant figures. We made sure to have one, two, three significant figures in our final answer. All right, now these are more problems, and these can certainly be practiced. But this gives you an idea of how it works. So take a look at these. These are good to practice with. You can see if your answer matches the key. Now that said, we do need to look at another flavor of this, which is what happens if you're converting between two different measuring systems. Everything I've given you so far was all metric. But what if you have an English metric unit? 
English units including feet, pounds, inches, etc. You would have to do conversion factors that, first of all, depending on what it is, it may have one or two or more conversion factors. That can vary. But notice what it says here about your conversion factors. You're going to have to pay attention to how many sig figs and conversion factors now, because it now will affect how you round, because it's an approximation. Let's look at some examples. I'll show you what I mean. So kilometers to miles. Now, we will never ask someone to memorize how many kilometers are in a mile, how many miles in a kilometer. You have on your reference sheet. In fact, go look at it now. You should be able to say how many kilometers is equal to a mile. But answer that now. Okay, 1.61 kilometers is a mile. All right, so that's what you needed for this. That's what you need to do for this. Now, how do we know what we're going to need for this? You look at your reference sheet. And you notice that you have a direct conversion from kilometers to miles. That means we can do it in just one step because you've got something in a reference sheet that can just do it all in one go. So this is what it actually looks like. Now, how do we know to set it up this way? Again, the first thing you write is not this. It is not this. Answer now, what is the first thing you write when you solve this? If you're correct, you said the given. So really, when you write this, that is the first thing that appears on your paper. Then you set up your conversion factor. Again, do I put units first or numbers first? Answer now. Okay, hopefully you said units first. So I'm going to put the unit of kilometer here so we can cancel out because this is not part of the final answer. I, technically, I should be making a lowercase k, but even one gets the idea. Anyway, um, for miles then, we'll put that on top because, well, it's the only space left over. And if it's on top, it'll wind up in the final answer, miles. That's the abbreviation for miles. So we set up our units first. Kilometer cancels kilometer to give a mile for our final answer. And then we look at our reference sheet. It says one mile is 1.61 kilometers. So if one mile is 1.61 kilometers, you, you show that as one mile is 1.61 kilometers. All right, you gotta pay attention to the numbers there, okay? One mile is that many kilometers. So it's telling us we take this number and divide it by 1.61. So here it is, the animated way, and then it shows you that answer. Now, pay attention, aside from the fact that, okay, so we set it up, right? We got our conversion factors set with the numbers in the right place. Look at how I rounded that final answer. I did not just, the raw number that comes out of your calculator is some sort of number soup with a whole bunch of numbers more than this. The, de the de decimals go on. So this is rounded. Notice, this is three significant figures. This is one, two, three, four, five, six figs. In previous ones, we were had like eight sig figs, eight sig figs, one sig fig, one sig fig, three sig figs, three sig figs. Like the sig figs and the ants were matching our given. And that is no longer necessarily the case because of this. I said I would explain a little more of this earlier, and here's what I was talking about. This is five sig figs. This is only three significant figures because miles and kilometers are totally different measurement systems, and so it's only approximate. Really, this number is like pi. The number pi, 3.14159, and so on, goes on forever. This number goes on forever. But for your convenience, you round it to three sig figs. For that reason, you are not allowed to have more than three sig figs on any number calculated with this ever. And there's no exceptions to that. Okay, so maximum number is three sig figs on anything calculated with this. So since this has more than three, you're limited to three, and that's why we have it rounded to three significant figures. Obviously, box your answers. All right, now. I should mention, if this had been from kilometers to meters, then we would not pay attention to sig figs here, and we would just have five sig figs, five sig figs. Okay, this is only because we have a metric and an English unit. There's a note explaining the same idea I was just mentioning. So all of the rest of these go through that same process. And I see some of these have, okay, great. So, Mention a few things about these, but otherwise you can practice them on your own. Now, look at these, okay? From feet to kilometers, pounds to milligrams. You need to understand, English unit, metric unit, English unit, 
metric unit. These are things that you are going to be needing to understand that these are approximations with hat, which means they will have their conversion factors limit your rounding. Now, notice how I set this up. Now, this is the final answer. But if I was to set this up from scratch, there's my given. I put feet here so it can cancel. And in your conversion sheet, you do not have anything that tells you how many feet are in a kilometer. But you do have how many feet are in a mile in your conversion sheet. So you have to convert from feet to miles. And then once you're in miles, you put miles down here because it's got to cancel. Your conversion sheet does tell you how to convert from miles to kilometers. So that's why we have this. So you got to look on your reference sheet and see what you have. And this will tell you that you can take your feet to miles to kilometers. That's what this is showing. And it says 5,200 feet is a mile, 1.61 kilometers is a mile. Okay, so that's why we have those numbers that are what they are. So see what I wrote this right here? This is our plan. We went from feet to miles to kilometers. What plan would you use for this one? Go ahead and choose one of the options now. All right, now hopefully you picked the one that was pound to kilogram to gram to milligram. Now I'm aware that sometimes there may be other ways to get there. There are some cases where more than one path will get you there and it's fine. It's all acceptable. But our reference sheet tells us how many pounds is a kilogram and then we should know how to change from kilograms to grams to milligrams. So notice what this leaves us with. This leaves us with a mixed case where, okay, here, and I forgot to mention this is true for these up here too, this is conversion between different measuring systems. So you are limited to this many sig figs. No answer calculated using this will ever have more than one, two, three, four, five sig figs. These on the other hand are between two metric units. This is also two metric units. So infinity sig figs, infinity sig figs. So three sig figs, five, infinity, and infinity means your final answer gets rounded to three sig figs to match this being the lowest number. And by the way, notice all the rest of these have gone through what we've always would normally do. This comes out of your reference sheet. Kilo means a thousand, so the big number goes next to the small unit. Milli means one one thousand, so the number thousand goes next to the small unit. This divided by this times this times this, it gives you the answer. So obviously we want to box these. And there we go. And one final thing to mention, notice how this is infinite significant figures because they're both English. Whereas English and sorry, English and metric, yeah, different measuring systems. So three sig figs, and that's why this got went reduced down to three sig figs. It's because of this conversion factor here. Right, so try these out also. And if you follow this process, none of these is beyond your ability. All right, that takes care of that.